I'm Tony Marks. I'm the president of the New York Public Library, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our humble trustee room. I draw your attention to the mantelpiece. The city of New York has erected this building for the free use of all the people. And there are, of course, 92 other buildings um, that are here for the same purpose that Mr. Jefferson there illuminates. Tonight, we're here um, for the 27th year to present um, the Helen Bernstein Book Award for Excellence in Journalism, honoring journalists and their unique role, their powerful, essential role in drawing the public's attention to important current issues, events, and policies. Of course, we want to thank Helen Bernstein Feely and her family who are here, her daughter Kathy and son Jim. Um, it's wonderful to have you as part of the library family. We look forward to this event. This award was established in 1987 by Joseph F. Bernstein in honor of Helen with a generous gift to endow the Helen Bernstein Book Award for Excellence in Journalism and the Helen Bernstein Librarian for Periodicals and Journals. And I want to acknowledge and thank Karen Gessoni, who is that librarian and continues to coordinate this event. Karen, where are you? There she is. Four of our five amazing finalists are with us tonight. They are Dan Fagan, Sherry Fink, Fred Kaplan, Jonathan Katz. Unable to join us tonight is David Finkel, though David was with us last night for an amazing program, the first time we've had a public program and discussion associated with this event so that the public can enjoy the talent and insight of our finalists and, uh, and our guests. The library is honored to be the home of the Bernstein Award and to have this opportunity to recognize great journalistic work. The award-winning group for 20, of 2014 finalists exemplify what the award is all about. Writing on topics from Hurricane Katrina to Haiti and corporate pollution to military strategy and returning soldiers struggling with PTSD, their commitment to excellent reporting deepens our understanding of the world and inspires us all. We all know in this day in which the delivery platforms and the business models of journalism and of the kind of work that so many of us in the room are engaged in are transforming. The need, society's need for the kind of work that this award recognizes to inform the body politic to be able to make critical and informed decisions, to have a citizenry that can live up to the ideals of democracy rests upon the work that you all are engaged in, that our finalists are engaged in, that this award certifies. The award itself comes out of an elaborate process. Initially, uh, we have library staff across the research and branch libraries spending countless hours reading many, many books. I've seen them, it's amazing. Um, the review committee then selects the five finalists out of, in this case, 100 submissions. And I want to thank the review committee for their great work. David Callahan, Elizabeth Hayes, Tamara Evangelista Dougherty, Karen Gisoni, Elizabeth Hayes, Ken Johnson, Angela Montefines, and Rich reyes Gavilan. The selection committee um, then sends its recommendations to the final selection committee, the chair of which is James Hogue, who you will hear from shortly, Lynn Povich, Jack Rosenthal, Elaine Sciolino, and Calvin Sims. And I want to thank them all, and especially James, for their great service to the library and to this award. We'll now hear. I stepped on my own applause line. The, um, <laughs> tonight we are uh, honored and delighted to have a great guest speaker. Steve Cole is the Dean and Henry R. Luce Professor of Journalism at the Columbia Journalism School. 
He's a staff writer at The New Yorker, the author of seven books of nonfiction, and a two-time winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Between 1985 and 2005, he was a reporter, foreign correspondent, and senior editor at the Washington Post, where he covered Wall Street, served as the paper South Asia correspondent, was the Post's first international investigative correspondent based in London. He served as managing editor of the Post from 1998 to 2004. The following year, he joined The New Yorker. He's the author of seven books, including Ghost Wars, The Secret History of the CIA, Afghanistan, and Bin Laden, the Pulitzer Prize winning The Bin Ladens in An Arabian Family in the American Century. His most recent book is Private Empire, Exxon Mobil and American Power, which won the Financial Times Goldman Sachs Award as the best business book of 2012. While at the Post, Steve won another Pulitzer Prize for his reporting on the Securities and Exchange Commission. He served as president of the New American Foundation, a public policy institute in Washington, D.C. between 2007 and 12. I was honored to have him at Amherst College, and I am particularly grateful for his discretion because we have confirmed this evening that our apartment windows actually look into each other. <laughs> Investigative journalism, yes, let's draw the line. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming the amazing Steve Cole. Thank you very much, uh, Tony, and uh, thank you all for welcoming me here tonight. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I do want to start by uh, thanking uh, Mrs. Bernstein for her continuing involvement in this award. Um, sorry. My hip's got about six weeks left, so I'm hobbling to surgery. Um, but, uh, um, and I really want to compliment the judges and the review committee for this year's work because uh, these are actually five really, really fine books, and I hope you'll have time to take them to the beach this summer and really read, read them. Um, they're all uh, really distinctive. They do have something in common, which is, I think, an engagement with the public issues that the award is intended to honor. Uh, but they uh, do so from uh, uh, multiple perspectives and with really fine literary skill. There's, it's hard to find four or five books from last year that so, uh, I, so well synthesize literary ambition with deep reporting and uh, a fierce moral commitment to the public issues that they engage in. And I, I just uh, compliment all of the writers. Uh, full disclosure, David Finkel, who's not here, he's attending his daughter's uh, graduation uh, tomorrow at a university uh, to the Northeast. He stayed over at my apartment last night. And uh, so I know how much he wanted to be here and how much he enjoyed being in part of the, of the panel yesterday. Um, I thought I would uh, take a few minutes just to reflect with you about one subject that's very much part of my life now that I'm at Columbia and trying to think about how to be helpful to the 300 self-selected graduate students in journalism who turn up every day against all the evidence wanting a life uh, <laughs> in journalism and a life in, in books and reporting. And then also uh, try to connect uh, one or two thoughts about that with uh, something that I haven't spoken about uh, before uh, and was just thinking about over the last five or six days in this prize season, we had the Pulitzers today up at Columbia and otherwise, which is where uh, journalism is now um, situated in, in reference to public corruption in this country. Because I think we're entering into an era over the next uh, five or 10 years that it seems to me the Bernstein war Awards are also uh, trying to uh, reflect on in which we require journalism to renew its in engagement with the, with the whole subject of public corruption and uh, the accountability of uh, politicians who take uh, what will now be increasingly large sums of money from private interests uh, while uh, acting as stewards of our democracy. So the, I think the two subjects connect uh, for the reasons that, that Tony suggested. Uh, journalism is obviously in a period of great disruption and change. There is quite a lot of possibility and promise emerging from the way the uh, digital revolution is reshaping 
uh, the possibilities of journalism, but there has been a very rapid disruption of professional journalism in newsrooms. 